Okay, now we're going to look at getting our section started, our section view. You're going to need two section views, section cuts. If we're looking at this floor plan, I'm just going to copy over section cut A, A, which has already been modeled up in here. This view from our scan, so that'll give you some base information to measure the ceiling heights and the overall building height, that sort of thing. It'll help you if you use this section up here for one of your sections that would be okay or if you want to modify the location of it a little bit that's fine and then do a cross section so you're going to do a section this way as well which is not modeled um, in one of these scans so you'll have to pull that information from your other drawings at that point to make your second section cut so one of the things that i noticed real quick about this section cut a it looks like it's cutting across here along this wall but well, you can see in the in the image over here that's not really the case. It's cutting through this classroom with this tiered seating, the classroom that we met in, and it's also cutting through this gallery space. So it looks like in actuality this cut section cut here is actually around here. And you see this point, this marker indicates that when you cut, you're looking this direction. So we're looking up this way, which would be east in real life. So if you look up here at the section cut, this is the classroom that you're cutting through with this tiered seating. Here's the gallery space. And here's the studio space up top, the shop down here, the wood shop. Um, so this is a good, a good place to start. This is why we'll, we'll copy this over. I'm gonna move this drawing grab here the corner oh, it's locked you see that highlighted padlock there that's indicating that my layer for this is locked so I'm going to go back to my properties manager turn that off so now that I can move it I'm on ortho so it's wanting me to go in these directions if I hold the shift key then I can move it in a non-orthogonal direction just going to put it right in front of here. Now another thing we notice right off the bat is that the scale of these two drawings is drastically different. So the scale of this building here showing this wide is going to be this wide for our floor plans. So and we want to have the same scale on these drawings so we're going to have to shrink this image here which we'll do with just a scale command using reference point again. So I'm going to move this drawing I'm looking at my floor here, my second floor. So if I can click on this outside wall, I can line it up with this outside wall below. So it really slow zoom in here. I gotta zoom back out. So I'm gonna line it up to here. Line it up with that grid line. top of my other image. I'm just going to move it straight up. A little bit more out of the way, but I still want it to be overlaid because I need to use that reference point. Actually, I won't move it yet. Let's just scale it. Okay, so I'm going to go to the scale command and grab this drawing and click on my lines that are joined here along this grid line. I'm going to click there for my base point. I'm going to push my down arrow key or just type in R. Go to reference. I got to start over there. So I'm going to start back at my reference point. Slick, select the distance that I want to change, which is going to be this distance. And I'm going to scale that back down to my floor plan right here, my outside wall. So now these are relatively the same scale. Not exact, but it's good enough for our purposes. Now I'm going to move it out of the way. Now I can see that they're the same size. So what I can start doing now is I can drag these grid lines up. I'm just going to copy them so, so I have those ready. 
and then I'm going to ungroup these, ungroup, except I'm going to delete these ones because they do not matter in this elevation. We're going to create new elevations, elevation lines that go this direction. They won't be grid lines, they'll be elevation lines, and then we can indicate those elevations. If I created an elevation, I already have one here. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to make this the current layer. Going to change this to elevation, make current, gonna change it from being white to a different color. I'm just going to choose orange again because that's easy enough. Matches my grid lines. And change it from being a continuous line type. Here's my grid line. Okay, now I can create a line for my elevation. I'm going to do top of floor as my elevation marker so that we can see the same if we have an elevation indication in our floor plan that we know it's at that same elevation. So, if, for example, if I want to indicate in the floor plan that my gallery floor is lower than my mezzanine floor, but it's in the same plan, I can put an elevation marker on these floors and that will reference to top of finished floor. And then when I reference back to my elevation, my elevation lines are also top of finished floor. Okay, now I'm just going to copy these up. Just doing the main levels here. Okay, now you probably have measured, I saw some of your groups measuring a distance here from the, the coffers down to the gallery space. So you might have this distance and then you can really know a lot more accurately what these spaces are going to be, what these elevations are going to be at. We can annotate these later. But for now we're just going to mark these. Now I have Hopefully you've drawn all your floor, your walls, excuse me, your walls and your floor plans. So you can just grab those lines that you've created. Now I'm going to change my line type to something else. I'm going to change to, to a zero. And your zero line is not going to print. It's not going to plot. So I'm just going to grab, say, these walls, the wall thickness. And I'm going to drag those up. You know, my wall was 8 inches thick, so I can either copy this over 8 inches, or I can just go back down here, grab the other side of the line, other side of the wall, and draw another line for 8 inches or whatever it was if it's 12 inches. Just move it another 4 inches. So I can draw these lines, these two reference lines, so that when I start drawing up here, we're going to be drawing in the same plane, so then I can know if I copy these over, to other walls, and match them up with my drawn floor plan. Then you don't have to measure out all of the distances in the rooms because you know and your floor plan is already measured out. If you keep these in line with another one another, then you can know your distances. It will speed up your drawing time uh, drastically, not having to measure everything out. You can just copy over. And then when I want to draw the actual walls, I can change back to my walls, make current, and then start drawing my walls for my right 
Uh, my walls and sections. These are going to be crocheted as well. So any solid, we'll just do solid all the way around. Solid for concrete, solid for wood. Maybe a different hash pattern for each of those. And just start drawing these details. So you can use this section again. Get a lot of information from here. Copy over this concrete copper. So when you draw this, it'll all be crocheted the same because it's cut through element and then behind this, these lines here that go beyond are going to be a little bit lighter than this heavy line which is cut. So everywhere that you're going to have a cut line is going to be showing up a little heavier than one that's beyond. Like the walls for this, the lines for this door, this door frame, are not going to be showing as heavy as walls that were cut through. So you can either make a new line type or one that fits. I'd probably make a new line type for elevated elements. And you can have a lighter line weight. So start drawing your elevations like this. And then when it comes to your next cut, you can cut through here and extend out this direction. Um, if that gets complicated, you can just ignore that uh, and do it the same way. But sometimes when you're modeling elevations, you just draw directly from your, your floor plan. So you have your other cut section over here. So you could draw, pull all these lines for the walls that you see into your floor plan. And then you just rotate this view in your layout. So if you want to know how to do that, maybe I'll go over it in another video or you can ask about that. But that's how you get going on your sections.